into negotiations with the city about if we do X, can we get, like apply for a permit and then go through a traditional process of saying, they'll say, well, you can't do this, and we say, well, could we do that? Um, so kind of a classic negotiation uh, model. Okay, so there we go. There's there's a clarification on the permit. Can I see people that are interested in getting a permit? Please twinkle if you would like to see us talk about that. Look, look around. I'm not seeing much of any interest in that. So I would ask that we just move on. And if we could just give some support for the National Lawyers Guild and all the And Stu has one last thing to say on legal matters. Very briefly, um, a woman asked me about the length of time you may be spending in custody if you're arrested. You heard that the intention is to hold people as long as possible. Obviously, the more people get arrested, the less law, less they're going to be able to hold people for a long time, or at least not going to be able to hold too many of them, because there is only so much room in there. Every now and then, it does get overcrowded, and they let people go. <coughs> so, that said, the limit in the state of Oregon is three days before you see a judge. That is the technical longest time. So far our record in the occupation is 13 and a half hours that one person spent at Jameson Square. Yeah. If that person is here, I'm sure he'll tell you about it. <laughs> uh, so that's a quick lowdown. I know you guys have a lot to do. I'm trying to be as quick as possible. If you have questions for me, let me know. I'm going to walk off stage right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, y'all, I know we said just emergency committee announcements, but in the spirit of solidarity, we have a representative from the Oregon Alliance of Retired Americans that's going to read a statement of solidarity with Occupy Portland. Yeah. Greetings. I come before you in solidarity. I come before you in solidarity. I had to read a message from the Oregon... Alliance for Retired Americans. You know you've already won the majority of Americans to the side. Politically you have. Don't squander it. Because in springtime when you can get back in here, what you do today is going to determine the independent political action in an election year that you can use as an offensive mechanism the stymie the courts, the stymie the politicians, who you know are aligned against you. In solidarity, on Thursday, November 10, 2011, the Assembled Executive Board and the members of the Oregon Alliance for Retired Americans unanimously approved our solidarity with Occupy Portland. from Working America and the NALC. Yeah. Two more statements! Yeah. Okay, so is everybody ready to move into our next stage? Yeah. Awesome. We have very limited time. Can anybody tell me the time? 7.51. 7.51? So we pretty much only have one hour for each major block of discussion, which means that we are going to have to be very, very mindful of how much space we are occupying up here. Um, so, that being said, I'm gonna take a second to talk about what happened earlier today. So again, just to reiterate, this first part of the discussion is an evolution, a continuation of the discussion that we had from the Emergency General Assembly today at noon. In that discussion, what we did at first is we had this kind of soapbox thing where a whole bunch of people got to come up and share their solutions, their ideas, their sentiments. It was wonderful, very reinvigorating. And then we broke out into um, discussion groups to talk about how to handle this eviction notice. And when we came back from those discussion groups, one person from each group reported back and what we heard were a lot of different sentiments, some of them overlapping, some of them very different. Um, and we grouped them into three major categories, um, one being messaging, 
one being what to do up until the occupation, um, up until the eviction, and one being what to do afterwards. And so we're hoping that tonight, in this section, we can continue the conversation of what to do up until the eviction. Um, so rather than go into all the details of everything we discussed, we kind of came up with a synopsis at the end. And then after I kind of give this out, if there was anybody else that was there that wants to um, add anything that they think is very pertinent that I left out, please I feel do. free to do so. I, do. Uh, I, do. I haven't done it yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> great. Okay, so um, there were there were many ideas, like I said, that were thrown out, and hopefully there will be representatives of each of our breakout discussion groups from the people that were there earlier to go into more detail. But the um, the main sentiment was um, that we want to have um, we want to preserve camp and we want to hold camp. Even though there were several people that had different ideas, the main sentiment that came out at the end was that um, the idea that we um, we want to hold we want to really reach out to the communities in Portland at large and get a whole bunch of solidarity, a show of solidarity on Saturday for people to, the idea being for, um, yeah, for people, the idea being for there to be affinity feeder marches coming from all different parts of the city and converging on occupied Portland. And to spend Saturday afternoon evening, night, and into Sunday morning with us in whatever capacity they feel comfortable. And that that space would be a celebratory space of solidarity. So, um, so the idea being that there's going to be music, that we would have potlucks. Potluck was a huge theme of today's meeting, which I really like. I think we're all we're kind of hungry. Um, but uh, music, potlucks, and a family-friendly environment, a decidedly family-friendly environment. Um, which means that we work together to keep, keep it a safe and very drunken-free zone so that people feel safe coming in. Um, and however you want to interpret that, it's just kind of this idea of safety to welcome the larger community in. Um, and then also to ask them to stand in solidarity with us, recognizing that while the eviction notice is given for 12.01 a.m., that what we have seen around the country is that that eviction notice is usually given for 12 or 12.01, and then action is not implemented until 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning. So asking people to understand that and come prepared to stay, and if they're not comfortable sitting down and getting arrested with us, that they can stand on the sides and be legal observers of everything going down. Um, and then other ideas for the night that came out of that were um, having a perpetual march around the two squares um, so as to hopefully make a long enough march so that police can't even really come in without disrupting that march. Um, and there were a lot of other ideas that pertain to the second half of our discussion tonight that I'm just not going to get into yet because we're going to save that for the after possible eviction or implementation of eviction and after, okay? Um, but really quickly, if, if you were there at the meeting today and I left out anything that was very pertinent about ideas, um, can you just raise your hand? All right, in front you can do one. Uh, one. And, all right, you agree. Okay, and this is try, try and keep these brief if possible. So, one. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. One thing we talked about. One, one thing, thing we talked about, talk about is the potential ability to split. <laughs> into different regional aspects of Portland right now. Aspects of Portland right now. To take 10 minutes as a GA. To take 10 minutes as a GA. And split into five groups. Northwest. 